I'm Daniel, and you're watching Loaded Viking Woodworks. Woo! That is an espresso fit for a Viking. Today, we're going to be building a chair that is fit for a Viking. A bearded Viking. <laughs> so stick around, and let's have some fun. We're going to be winging it with no set of plans, just an idea and a vision. So this ought to be fun. Meet me at the table saw. Logic will get you from point A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. First things first, I got a couple of comments I'm responding to on one of my latest videos. And I literally respond to everyone. Let's go ahead and get our stock cut to workable sizes. Starting with our legs first. I'm going to be cutting six of them at 30 inches and two of them at 34 inches. The remaining pieces that will be shorter will be cut down to 18 inches. The stock that I'm working with is from a deck job that we just finished up and we had ripped some 5 quarter inch decking down to 3.5 inches for some nosing on the picture frame. So these are three and a quarter by one inch thick. And these are gonna be perfect for the vision I have for this chair. If you don't have material on hand, this chair can be built for under $15. You may notice that big green grizzly bear sitting right there at the end of my table saw. That is from Grizzly and I've got it tuned in, dialed in, and ready to fire up. Don't worry, I'll be using it for this project. It's a 14 inch Grizzly G0 Triple 5 XH, and it's a bad mamma jamma. So now that I have everything rough cut to dimension, I'm gonna take it to the miter box and get it cut to the exact dimensions we need. So meet me at the miter box. For me, woodworking is sort of like an art form or a dance between craftsmen and material. Our next order of business is taking this tongue and groove decking that I have left over and I'm gonna rip the tongue and the groove off of it and that will leave us with about two and seven eighths so we'll rip all of the stock we already have milled down to two and seven eighths along with this stuff and i thought this would be one inch but it has these two little humps right here that need to come off and that will only leave us with seven eighths so ultimately i'll plane this down to seven eighths along with planing these two humps off of the back side of these that way we have consistent material and stock to work with makes it a little bit easier so I'm gonna get this cut down to workable pieces and I'll meet you back here. In the world of woodworking, precision plans are often considered essential. But I take a different approach. Woodworking is more than just following a blueprint to me. It's sort of like a journey of creativity and discovery. Picture this, you're in the workshop surrounded by the smell of freshly cut wood and the hum of power tools. There's something magical about the process, isn't there? It's like each piece of wood has a story and it's up to me or you to bring it to life. In reality, every piece we make or every blueprint we draw starts the same way. With an idea and a vision. How you get there depends on the approach that you want to take. Just because mine's a little bit different than others doesn't mean I discriminate against those who do use a set of plans. And if you don't lose your tape measure at least once a day in the shop, then you're not really working that hard, huh? And like I said, 
I'm not opposed to using plans. I use them every day in my other business of building custom homes. Maybe it's just I'm tired of looking at somebody else's set of plans and kind of create my own in my own little way, in my own little shop. All right then, now that we've got that cut down to rough dimension, we're gonna go ahead and rip off the tongue and the groove of these pieces. That'll leave us with two and seven eighths. And then we'll take and rip down this other stock to the same dimension at two and seven eighths. And I've been waiting to say this for a long time. Meet me at the bandsaw. Using a bandsaw over a table saw offers certain advantages, especially when it comes to safety. And when you switch on that bandsaw, that low hum, it's just so satisfying. And I am just super humbled that Grizzly was so willing to work with me and send me this bandsaw. So now that we've got our tongue and our groove ripped off of these pieces, we're gonna take our other stock and go ahead and rip it down to the same dimension that these are. So back to my approach. My main approach is taking cheap or leftover materials from my jobs and building prototypes. That way I can determine if my idea is a good idea or a bad idea. That way I can determine whether or not to produce that certain idea using hardwoods, which are much more expensive. All right, now let's head over to the planer and rip these humps off of this piece. Using scraps, or in this case, any leftover material, is super important when you're building a prototype. Over here at the miter box, we're gonna take and cut four little squares. And these will be for the bottom of our four feet. So we've got two and seven eighths. So we'll cut four of them at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And you can set up a stop block to run these through real quick. Just be sure to let that blade stop all the way before releasing the saw. Our two back legs are going to be different sizes. We got the two longer legs that we cut will be paired with two of the shorter ones we cut sitting like this. We cut these blocks for the bottom of each leg and we're gonna pocket screw it in between each leg. So let's go ahead and start assembling our legs. And this will all make sense here in just a minute, I promise. <laughs> Clamp our jig straight to our piece. And we'll be putting pocket holes on both sides of our feet. And that should leave you with a piece that looks Kind of like that. <laughs> so that'll be on the bottom so you'll never see it. But now we got some nice pocket holes to attach to our feet. So I'm going to finish drilling out all these holes and I'll meet you back here in just a bit. So let's talk about comfort zones. My comfort zone has been fine jewelry boxes with hand cut dovetail joinery. But a couple years ago, I decided to start expanding my woodworking with tables, furniture, and opened up a whole new avenue of some brand new revenue. So now that we got all of our holes for our pocket holes drilled out, we're going to take and get these installed on our bottom feet. And you can use a clamp for this, which I'll be doing. Just make sure you don't get in the way of where you gotta put your screws. Make sure you're nice and flush. This will be how our back legs look right here. Expanding my woodworking 
into different niches has also expanded my revenue, my content, but most importantly, my audience. Meeting new friends and building a solid community of woodworkers just like me. There we have it. This is going to be the back leg and this is your front leg. And our rail is going to kill right into our back leg here. But first, we need to go ahead and get our cross members cut. And we're going to pull up 18 inches from the bottom of each leg, making a mark indicating where our cross members will go. And next thing we'll do is cut two of our cross members here at 24 inches. Let's go ahead and square over our marks at 18 inches. And these are going to sit right under those 18 inch marks we made. And you want to pre-drill where your screws are going to go. That way we can come back later and add some plugs. And we're just adding two screws to each side. And we'll go ahead, that's our front cross members. And we'll put one on one of our back legs. And remember to be sure and check for square. And now let's just add our opposing leg to our cross member. And it should start to take shape like this. Now I cut two rails at 18 inches and that's for the upper rail and we'll just fasten those through the back side and on the tops and we'll be able to plug these holes. And now I'm just applying the bottom rail that is 16 and 3 quarters and that will hold my seat. <laughs> Damn geese. So our next order of business is the back. I'm gonna cut one of the backers at 18 and a quarter, and the other two, I'm just gonna cut a little shy of 18 and a quarter, probably around 16 inches, and I'll show you why. So I've got these cut, and I'm gonna glue these together. That way they can be ready when we finish the next step of our chair. And we'll add a dab of glue, 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 add a dab of glue. You don't want to apply too much pressure. Just enough to hold this tight while it dries. And we'll set this over here to the side and we'll carry on to the next step. Right then, so while that's drying, we're gonna come back over here with our last two pieces and I'm gonna add two pocket holes here, here, and on this opposite side as well. That way I can add pocket screws to the bottom of this to hold our seat in place. So we'll just grab our jig and the settings are already where we want them. And we'll just take and set this just like this and we'll add these pocket holes. That's not the right bit. <laughs> oh, damn geese. And 
and this will be under our chair so you will never see these and we'll do this side and we'll come to this side and do the same thing Perfect. Take one of our pieces. And we're just going to butt it tight to the front legs, making sure we're flush with both ends, and add our screws. Using pocket holes is one of my favorite methods of fastening furniture together. And we'll install our last piece here. Just like that. All right. Now we got this all dried up, we'll go ahead and get some of the squeeze out cleaned up with a dull chisel I got laying around somewhere. So now that I have my backer, I think I want to add a little bit of shape in here. So what do I plan on doing, you ask? I'm going to take and add a bevel to the top here and the bottom kind of giving it a curve so we'll take and cut it on edge on a 10 degree bevel something like that so now I need to pull over three and one eighth and make this even to the other side. It must have shifted <laughs> when I went to clamp it up, but that's no big deal. We can handle that at the bandsaw. So we'll just square these lines over. And once again, meet me at the bandsaw. So now what I'm going to do is just take some sandpaper and ease over this edge right here where the blade missed. That way we can have a nice smooth transition. Next I'm going to add two pocket holes here, two here, and we'll get this thing fastened and have this chair prototype finished up. So whether you're using a set of plans or simply using your imagination to reach your destination, the final result should always be rewarding. All right, I've got that set in place ever so slightly. I'm just going to clamp it while we add our pocket screws. Oh yeah, now this is a throne fitted for a viking, a bearded viking. Wow rock stars, now that I've got the prototype built and put together, I'm going to move ahead with the production aspect of this project. And the first one I'm going to be making is going to be out of solid white oak. Now I can assess where I need to add pocket screws before fastening certain pieces, ease some edges over. But ultimately, I just wanted to give y'all a demonstration of my creative process 
without using the set of plans. Soon I'll be announcing the winner of the shelf contest we had last month, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, get in your shop and make some sawdust. Thanks guys.